Welcome back to Rich Words Music, where today we're shooting out these two guitars. Now this is the Harley Benton DC Junior Fat in Benton Blue, and this is the vintage V120 in two-tone sunburst. And I have a good feeling why some of you guys asked me to shoot these two out. Firstly, they're both very obviously junior models. We've got a single cut junior here and a double cut junior there. And secondly, because they both have rather large necks, to put it mildly. Before we go any further though, I should tell you that the Harley Benton DC Junior Fat was sent to me by Harley Benton for my separate review demo video that I've done, and you can see elsewhere on my channel. I'm not getting paid for my opinions, I don't even know if I get to keep the guitar, but just so you guys know that up front. I also have this guitar borrowed from my friend Kai, so neither of these actually belong to me, so Let's see if that changes in the future. But anyway, what I'm going to do is briefly tell you about the specifications of both guitars, then we'll play them in a variety of styles, and afterwards I'll give you a bit more detail and my conclusion on which I prefer. So I'm kind of billing this video as the battle of the massive necked juniors, because both of these guitars do have very, very chunky necks. Now, the 59 Fat as featured on the DC Junior Fat, is not quite as big as the vintage one. The vintage one is not even billed as being a fat neck by vintage, but it's absolutely huge. It's one of the biggest necks I've ever played. And while this on the DC Junior Fat is not as big as a real 59 Les Paul neck carve would have been, it's still pretty chunky. So if you have small hands or if you're underage, please refrain from buying one of these two guitars until you've tried them and you know that your hands can get round them. There's plenty of other guitars with more standard sized necks. There's even DC Junior models and there's plenty of other normal Junior models with standard and even smaller sized necks. So a little bit about the specifications of the two guitars then. Let me just pop the vintage down. The Harley Benton DC Junior Fat has a mahogany body and a mahogany neck. It has an ebony fretboard, which is a very, very good feature at this price point. It has Wilkinson Deluxe tuners up at the headstock here, and it has a graphite nut there. The fingerboard radius is 14 inches, 305 millimeters, and the scale length is 628 millimeters. So if you're familiar with Gibson guitars, this will be right up your alley. Down at the body then we have this lovely Benton baby blue color, which you can see across the back as well. And that sets off, in my opinion, really, really nicely against the white hardware. We've got a white, black, white, three ply scratch plate. The control knobs, volume and tone are both white, as is the Roswell pickup. And you'll notice that the tone knob is actually set up a little bit from the body and that's because the other fat part of this guitar besides the neck is the pickup. Now the pickup has two different modes it's a Roswell P90 but it also has a stacked humbucking mode so when you've got the tone knob up like this it's in single coil P90 mode pop it down like that and you enter humbucking mode so it's a stacked P90 humbucking pickup. Now let me just pop the HB down pick the vintage up and this is a more traditional looking junior for sure. This two-tone sunburst has a very vintage vibe. I love the way that you can see the mahogany through the finish there as well. And it's an all round heftier beast than the DC Junior Fat. The body is a millimeter or two thicker and that neck, which is one piece mahogany, is also super duper chunky. I've really never played a bigger neck than this one, except on my other friend's genuine 1956 Les Paul Jr. That's the fattest neck I think I've ever played. I don't normally play massive necks at home, so these two are both larger than what I would normally have, and they do take some getting used to. Now, Vintage, of course, is a Trev Wilkinson baby. He worked with the company for many, many years as a designer and consultant, and his voice and his innovations are all over this guitar. So if I flick us down to the headstock there, we've got Wilkinson Deluxe Tuners, which are actually exactly the same tuners as you'll find on the DC Junior Fat. We've got a Graftec new bone nut here, and the fingerboard on the Vintage is Lignum Rosa. Now that's a substitute for rosewood that Trev Wilkinson found and started using on vintage guitars in 2017. If you want more information about that, watch my dedicated video on this guitar. There's a link in the cards and a link in the description down there. Moving down to the body then, we've got that two-tone sunburst finish, which is also set off really nicely by the black volume and tone control, the black dog-eared P90 Wilkinson pickup, and the single-ply black 
scratch plate. We've got a Wilkinson bridge here too, and the pickup is a little bit special as well. It's not your bog standard P90. Trove Wilkinson always likes to take standard designs and add his unique developments and innovations to them. And so the W90 SK is stacked in a way. It's not stacked like the DC Junior Fat, it's not fully humbucking, but it does have some extra winds in it, some extra wire, some extra magnets, and it does react and reduce just a tiny bit of that P90 hum that some of us know and love. So it is a P90, and you can actually see, I've done another video already where I compare this pickup to the genuine full-on P90 of the Harley Benton SC Junior. I'll also link that in the description in the cards, so watch that later if you will. But this is closer to a standard P90 than the stacked humbucking P90 in the DC Junior Fat. I hope that description hasn't confused you too much, but let's stop talking about them now and play them a little bit. What I'm gonna do is use my Hughes & Kettner Black Spirit 200 head, we'll use the amp's clean channel, and for a bit of crunch, we'll engage my Benson preamp pedal, just to juice it up a bit to do some classic rock and some indie. We'll then go to the amp's lead channel for some heavier rock stuff and some alternative rock stuff, and at the end, we'll flick back to the clean channel and initiate the Rev G3 for some full-on metal madness. Enough talk then, let's play the Harley Benton DC Junior Fat and the vintage V120 now, and we'll speak about them a bit more afterwards.
Okay then, so that was the vintage V120 versus the Harley Benton DC Junior Fat, and I hope you enjoyed the tones from both guitars. Now let me go on and tell you what I think of them both, and perhaps you can also write down in the comments which of the two guitars you preferred, and we'll get a little discussion going on down there. So we'll start with the looks then, because I find both of these guitars to be exceptionally beautiful, actually. I've got the vintage in my hand right here, and I, yeah, I do love that two-tone sunburst finish. You can see the grain in the wood there. That's really beautiful, isn't it? It's a really classic looking guitar. That kind of dark, almost tobacco-y sunburst is one that I really associate with guitars like this. Now, the Benton Blue of the DC Junior Fat is a much more modern color. And actually with that finish, with that really baby blue and the white hardware, it looks to me like the background in a Mario game or something. It looks like the sky with the clouds. So I see that as being a very happy guitar, a less traditional guitar in terms of looks, but I love them both in that regard. They both look like guitars that I would take off the wall if I was in a store. And what more can you say than that? If a guitar looks like that, if a guitar makes you want to play it just from looking at it, then they both score highly in that department. Both the guitars also have really nice dark fretboards. So you've got the Lignum Rosa here on the V120, and of course the Ebony on the DC Junior Fat is very dark indeed. Now one or both of them might be dyed just to get them darker, but I really appreciate that kind of look. As I said, I really enjoy Rosewood, I enjoy Ebony too, and there's something about some of the newer woods that we've seen in recent years, like Pau Ferro and Indian Laurel for example. Those boards often look kind of dry, and they just look not as inspiring to me as darker ones do. Of course I'm sure you can change that with a nice bit of lemon oil with a little bit of TLC, but these guitars both looked great as soon as I set eyes on them. When it comes to the actual build quality of both guitars, I'd say we're in fairly similar territory here, and they are both similar price points too. So at time of filming, we're at the end of April 2021, the Harley Benton DC Junior Fat costs 255 euros from Toman, and you'll get the vintage V120 for about 300. So it's just a little bit more expensive than the Harley Benton. I would also budget a full and thorough setup from your local guitar tech on both of the guitars, as you should with any new guitar, in fact, so that'll give you an extra 50, 60 euros or dollars on top. But we're both very much in the realm of the affordable here, and I think that with the vintage, the extra money that we could be paying is mostly for the mahogany woods in it. So you've got a mahogany body and neck on the DC Junior Fat, but the mahogany body here is somehow thicker and heftier, and the neck is a one-piece. And I'm pretty sure that that costs more than a multi-piece one would, and that is also going to help with the sustain, especially when we consider the combination of that one-piece and the massive thickness of the neck. This is a big old piece of mahogany that we've got in this neck right here. Now, for the rest of the build quality, we've got Wilkinson hardware on the headstocks of both. We've got those Wilkinson Deluxe tuners. They both do a pretty good job. The guitars both stayed in tune very well. I didn't have to retune either during the playing process for this video. I got them both in tune. I got them into standard. They stayed. I went down to drop D. They stayed for that. So no issues there. So you've got the 
the new bone Graftec nut on the vintage and you've got just a generic graphite nut on the Harley Benton. Both of them seem to have been cut just fine. No issues with the strings, no issues with the frets or anything like that. They're all smooth on both guitars. If I look at the guitars themselves on the bodies, I don't see any build work or anything like that where I think, okay, QC issues at the factory. So build quality, especially for the price of both guitars, I consider to be very good indeed. Again, just to come back to the fretboards when it comes to build quality. Now, Lignum Rosa is a rosewood laminate as selected by Trevor Wilkinson to overcome the CITES regulations that came in in 2017. And the DC Junior Fat has a Macassar Ebony fretboard. The other brand that I know of that often uses the term Macassar Ebony is Chapman Guitars. So we're in kind of a similar ballpark with that here. I don't know if that's one of the more affordable ebony types, although I'm sure it is because we're dealing with basically budget guitars here. But all I can say is that from my experience of playing this guitar, the DC Junior Fat, I really like the ebony board. And if there was an option for a rosewood or ebony board on the V120, even if I had to pay 50 euros more for it, I would choose that because that's just something that I like. Now, when it comes to playability, the main issue that you're going to come up across here is with the necks of both guitars. Like I said at the very start, this is the battle of the fat necked junior models. And this vintage V120 neck here is one of the very fattest that I've ever had the fortune of playing. In your case, if you don't like fat necks, it'll be the guitar that you've had the misfortune of playing because it is very big indeed and it could be divisive in a sense. Now, the neck on the DC Junior Fat is also pretty chunky. And as I said in the intro, Harley Benton call it a fat 59 neck carve, but it's still not as big as this one on the vintage. So as I also said in the intro, try these guitars in person if you can before you buy them, because they're the kind of thing that if you don't get on with it, you may never, and it may put you off what is otherwise a very, very playable guitar. And in terms of the rest of the playability, both guitars are very simple and easy to play, which is in the ethos of the Junior, really. On the back of the V120 there, we've got a sloping heel joint that gives you very good upper fret access. The DC Junior Fat, of course, is double cut, so you've got no problem playing all of the 22 frets. And overall, like I said, they're so simple and easy to play. There's not a bunch of pickups or pickup selection options for you to get lost in. You plug in, you turn the guitar up, and you go. And there's nothing against you playing your very best with both of these guitars once you've got your hand around that neck. The other key issue to address here is, of course, the sounds. How do they sound compared to one another? Both these guitars sound great, and they're both very, very versatile. I say this a lot in my videos, but P90 pickups are way, way more suitable for playing more types of music than most of us give them credit for. Both of these pickups come with a twist, though. So on the V120, we've got the lightly stacked, I'm going to call it Wilkinson W90SK, which is more like a traditional P90 than the stacked humbucking P90 on the DC Junior Fat. Now, with the Wilkinson, you've got a bunch of classic styles covered. For the cleans, it sounds lovely and full. It's got that lovely mid-range honk that you would expect from a P90, going all the way through to classic rock, alternative rock, and even some of the heavier stuff. It does that really well indeed. And it handled metal pretty well too, but I did think that that was the part where the DC Junior Fat came into its own. Now, for the cleans, for the crunches, I stayed pretty much always on the single coil section of the P90 with the DC Junior Fat. And I thought that that sounds good, but it doesn't quite have the P90 magic of the Wilkinson. So it's a great pickup, it's versatile, it does a lot of things very well indeed, but it just doesn't match up to the pure P90 in that aspect. However, when you get to the metal stuff, the down-tuned stuff, the alternative rock, the progressive rock, whatever you want to call it, the stuff I can't play very well, in other words, flick the DC Junior Fat into humbucking mode, and what you've got there is a much more girthy low end, a lot more bass, and I do think that it sounds a bit fuller, a bit heavier, a bit more suited to the chugging. It's definitely higher output than the Wilkinson, which is a much more classically voiced pickup. So that's another thing that's gonna really help you choose between those, these two guitars. If you want a guitar that's gonna be suited for absolutely everything, and can cover literally every bass from country to gent, then go with the DC Junior Fat. That would be my recommendation. It's easier to get around in that sense. The neck is also slightly smaller, and that's a factor for metal and shredding too. 
and on the Wilkinson you can do the metal but it doesn't quite feel as at home as the DC Junior Fat does. Overall though both guitars sound great, go back and listen to the sounds again and actually for some of the sections like for the classic rock and for some of the clean chords you really don't hear that much of a difference. We're kind of nitpicking here and I think if you were in a band mix, if you were playing a live show or if you weren't doing direct comparisons you wouldn't hear that much of a difference. So this is ultimately a taste thing, choose what you think sounds best for you. And so finally we come to the bit where I ask myself, Rich, which one of these would you buy if you were going to a store right now and they were both on the wall? Well that's a hard one because my taste is also quite eclectic. I play all the riffs in all these different styles for you in the videos because that's what I play at home. So it's like I'm making the videos with the music that I would also want to hear. It's not like I'm going out of my comfort zone to play all those things. I basically play riffs in the styles of the bands that I like. So I like a lot of different stuff. And what that means is that both of these pickups are having to cover a lot of ground for me. And in that sense, both of them do it. Now, I don't play as much metal as I used to back 10 or 15 years ago when actually my earliest bands and projects were more about metal and Rage Against the Machine type stuff. If I was still playing that kind of music I would definitely choose the DC Junior Fat over the V120. But I've mellowed slightly and these days I think if you had to push me to it I would spend the extra money and go for the V120. And that's because I really dig the Wilkinson pickup in it and now I've got used to playing the Fat Neck a little bit more it just feels like it's more a complete and characterful instrument in a way. That possibly sounds a bit strange because of course the DC Junior Fat is a complete instrument but this is just an all-round package that works for me and I can also accept its limitations. I can say that if I'm going to go and play metal or if someone asks me to go and do a down-tuned gig in drop D playing really heavy stuff I'll just not take this guitar. Whereas if I had the DC Junior Fat it's the kind of a thing where you could do it but it's not really a master of it. It will give me those more options but it won't give me them perfectly if that makes sense. So that's why what I'm trying to say is I would probably pick the V120 over the DC Junior Fat at time of filming anyway. Ask me again in six months and I might change my mind but that's what I'm thinking right now. I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope you've enjoyed the comparison, I hope that the two or three of you who asked for this have now found the answers that you were looking for but write me with any more questions that you have and I shall answer them in the comments there. Stick around and subscribe to the Rich Words Music channel if you're still watching this video please because I've got a lot more guitar based videos coming your way. There's going to be guitar comparisons, new guitars to look at, we're going to do pedals and amps and other stuff too and I shall be talking and chatting with some of the best people from this part of the music industry. But that's it for today's video. I've been Rich for Rich Words Music and I shall see you in the next one. Bye for now.